So today I'm going to be using uh, an extrusion. You can see here, it's a simple extrusion block, and I'm going to make a mouse. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go under surface and use X form. So what this allows me to do now is I can pick the surface that I want to manipulate and let me increase the level of complexity on that surface. Now I just need to specify how I want to move it. I want to move along a vector, specify the vector I want to move along, and then this I'm going to move in the Z direction. So I'm going to grab this row. Now once I grab this row, I'm just going to pull it straight down. And then I'm going to grab this row. I'm going to do the same thing. And as you can see, that solid is updating. It's being manipulated to the shape that I want. I'm going to grab this row and pull down. Now, the reason why I'm not going to move this row is because is I'm going to eventually mirror this over. And when I mirror it over, I want to make sure that it's smooth across the uh, center line. So I don't want to adjust this row of control points. It's very important. So now that I have uh, the shape that I want, I'm going to apply. Now I'm going to come in and specify this side face and basically do the same thing. Now I'm going to increase, <clears throat> increase, specify the vector. This time I'm going to be moving along the X axis. And for this, I'm going to grab this row, pull it in. Like that. And then I'm going to grab this top row, do the same thing. Pull it in. As you can see, I got a nice sort of a potato chip action happening. And then the next thing I'm going to do, a little bit more, is grab this row and bring it in just a bit. The reason why I want to drag that in is, is because eventually uh, I'm going to have to uh, split this and draft it. And I want to make sure that there's enough draft, enough angle on that wall. And here's a case where I may not necessarily want to apply a direct 2 mil draft. Maybe anything above 2 mils is acceptable to achieve the styling that I want. And that happens. Hit my apply. Okay, so, and I'll just do the same thing for my end face. <clears throat> Specify my vector, pull selection, bring that up, bring that up, and again, I'm going to move this in. Again, I'm not going to touch this row. I don't want this row to break in this direction. If I want to and give it some acceleration, I can grab that and go back and move it in my X direction, but I can't move it in any other direction. And then same thing for this top row, grab that. Pull that in, and this row, pull that in a little bit. This face, a little vector, specify. And then up my, once again, whoops, I think I grabbed one, there we go. All right, now that I have all that, that in, you can see I've got the shape that I want on my half of the mouse body. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and simply use, we'll go home, and I'm going to use an edge fillet. I'm going to fillet this corner, get it out to the appropriate size. Now, what's nice about edge fillet these days is you can see I can do a G2 curvature and then specify a row value, or it's the conic value, how sharp that peak is. Okay, so if I wanted that to be much sharper, I can go up to, let's say, 0.7. You can see I have a much higher row value. I want that at 0.5, just something that gives me a nice acceleration, doesn't need to be too crazy. And do the same for the front. And in this case, slightly smaller radius. There we go. All right. Now that I have that radius in place, or my radii in place, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I want to take and, in this case, I have a parting line that sits right through the center of this. And the bottom of this is going to draft in the opposite direction because I have a split line that's going to run through there. 
So as you can see, I have a surface, just a simple extrusion, that I'm going to use to make my draft. So I'll come in, draft. What's my vector? This is my parting element. Faces to draft. Now, as you can see, it wants to draft the other direction. That's not what I want. I want to reverse this. So if I come in here and reverse my parting direction, you can see it drafts the other side to leave this alone because I'm using it as a stationary or parting face. Specify my angle and OK. So as you can see, I now have where my parting element is going to reside. Next thing I need to do is I want to put in a fillet or blend around this top. And for this one, I'm going to go into face blend. And the reason why I want to use a face blend, okay, so I'm going to pick my top face, pick my side face, is with face blend, I have the ability to specify a rolling ball with a constant value. So with a constant value, what this does is it varies the radius as it wraps around. It's not a same constant value. It's a variable value because it's courting that corner. So basically the distance from this edge to this edge, let me go ahead and increase this so it's a little easier to see, that distance from here to here is exactly the same as it is from from this point to this point, this point to this point, so on and so forth. So it gives it a nice, clean, aesthetic look without um, having to go in there and try to guess. It also, it's almost like putting in a pipe around this corner, right? So if I threw in a pipe, that pipe would fall through, like a constant uh, uh, radius pipe would fall through, and then I would just simply do a blend out or some sort of a, a through curve mesh or something like that and then split away. But for this, it does it for me automatically. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another face blend. And this time I'm going to go on the bottom to here. Now it's saying it's a little large, so I'm just going to go in and say 1.5. We have that. Now the next thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go ahead and apply my shell. Do my mirror geometry. I want to mirror this. And let me show that. Let me go across this plane. Do my unite. And then the last thing I need to do, and this is something that I'm very grateful for that NX has done, is I'm going to go simply in here. And under the trim, you have what's called split body. I want to split this to that parting surface. Select OK. Now, historically, this would just create unparameterized solids, but now we have parameters. So if I take a look at this, and I'm just going to simply hide that top portion of it, you can see there is my final shelled out surface. Now, if I bring that back, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the edges, you can see I have a very nice, clean transition surface. Now, if I wanted to, I can go back into my X form, any one of these, and make any sort of modification that I want to. My vector, go back to my pull selection, grab As you can see, I have a nice live dynamic update for those poles. A little bit more. And again, I don't want to move this pole unless I'm moving it along in the, the X direction. Um, maybe I want to get a little bit more acceleration in there, and if that's the case, I can come in here, specify my X, and then I can grab this row and pull this out. As long as I don't move it off of the X direction, 
Come on. There you go. It'll remain tangent across my center line, or in this case, close enough. So if I go in here now and do a, a fancy, whoops, not uh, rendering analysis, and I want to do um, just a simple reflection on this. Just pick these. You can see it's nice, clean, and smooth across my center line. Same thing for this over here. Same thing across for my blends and my fillets. If I go into my analysis and go into my reflection, let me up this a bit, make it uh, ultra fine, get a really nice clean look at this. So as you can see, a very nice smooth clean transition wrapping all the way around. So this technique is going to be uh, very similar to sort of like a subdivided face technique where you're making a blob and pushing and pulling uh, control vertices like this, but on a sub D face, it, things act a little differently. But um, this is a nice way, especially now that I have a, a precedent here with the, um, uh, the X form that does a historical modification on an extrude. So now I, this, whatever shape that I start out with is almost like a ball of putty and I'm able to quickly and easily manipulate it to get the shapes that I want.